What is going on, guys? Opulent Vision, Road to Sub 20, Episode 21. Again, I thought we would have been there by now. If you're new to this video series, we are shooting for a sub 20 average of 12, which, I mean, we've gotten pretty close. We've gotten like 20.2, like a 20.45, I think. But, you know, today was not my best performance. I'm still unsure what my issue is. The last few episodes have been kind of subpar on my point, but as part of my consistent effort to keep posting these videos to keep myself practicing um, you know I'm gonna make the video anyway and post it no matter what I get because if I don't I'm only cheating myself and I'm cheating you guys so with that being said I feel like I don't get a lot of questions unless I say it but comment your questions for the Q&A for next week it can be anything personal life cubing life like if you want financial advice like it doesn't matter put it in the comments I will answer them. But with that being said, we had not a lot of comments come in from last week. We've got five good questions, but I'm gonna be doing my best to answer those for you guys. So let's go ahead and hop into it. That one Cuber 025 asks, why did you start cubing? This has been a popular question in the past. I feel like I get it maybe every five episodes. So I'm gonna answer it again for all those new people out here. But I was in Boy Scouts. I don't know if all countries have Boy Scouts, but it's like a uh, outdoorsy group of boys that meets. And you get uh, badges for doing certain things. I was part of this club in uh, maybe I was like 2011, 2012. Um, and one of my friends, actually, he already learned how to solve the Rubik's Cube and he would always bring it to these meetings. And I was like, that is so awesome. You know, I've never seen anybody uh, be able to solve one of those in my life. I knew I had one lying around, so I went home that night, learned how to do it. Um, it was a really crappy Rubik's brand, Rubik's Cube, but we made it work. Um, I ended up actually getting sub 30, I think, a few times on the Rubik's brand. And then I upgraded to the Moyu Aolong V2. Um, in my time, dropped substantially. It was kind of awesome. Um, but it gave me a pretty rough turning style, which I'm still trying to figure out um, even, what, 12, 13 years later. Um, so I don't recommend starting with the Rubik's brand. That is off topic, but let's go ahead and get to the next question. Bloxy sucks at Roblox. He says, what Lego set is your favorite? This is a loaded question because I have a lot of Lego sets. Um, I know I've showed a couple of my UCS <laughs> sets uh, in some of my shorts. That's what I was trying to say. Um, in the past, I've shown what my UCS Millennium Falcon, UCS ATAT, -AT, and then my, I think it's like the Collector Builder Series uh, Lego Batmobile 1967. Um, I think. Out of the sets I've shown you guys, I think the UCS Millennium Falcon is my favorite. Um, it's on display as like a centerpiece in my living room just because it looks so cool. Um, and I do get a lot of questions about it when I have um, dinner parties and, and things with my coworkers at my home. Um, and people love it. People absolutely love like looking really close at that set, looking at the detail. It's pretty awesome. But if I were to have an absolute favorite set, I don't remember the exact name of it, but the set came with Darth Malgus, um, some old Republic Lego guy. Um, it was his TIE Interceptor, I think is the name of it. Darth Malgus TIE Fighter, not sure. Um, but that set is one of the more expensive sets that I own. I think it was like 80 bucks new. And now it's worth like a hundred, or I'm sorry, maybe like $1,500. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked it up recently, but um, it's a set that collectors kind of like look at in my collection and, and they're like, yeah, this guy's in it, you know. Um, but enough about Legos. Let's go ahead and hop to the next question. Rubik Stan, um, who do you like more, Cubehead or Jperm? Now, that is also a tough question, and I know I'm going to get a lot of flack in the comments um, just because everyone likes everybody. I don't have a problem with either of them, but Cubehead is not really my style of YouTube video. Um, I don't prefer his 
style is what I'm trying to say. And that's okay. I know there's a lot of people out there who don't prefer my style of video. And hey, I'm not gonna hold it against them. So I'd have to say JPerm. Um, it's just more low key laid back. And I really like that. Um, we're gonna have another question coming up here about Cube YouTube. Um, so I'll save the rest of that for then. Uh, Hello Peoples OK asks, do you remember when you first started cubing? And the growth was so much faster than the present day and got PBs every week or so. That was great. I really miss those times. Um, I mean, you can still have growth like that if you practice every day, a lot of hours every day, and, and if you're a constant learner. Um, something about cubing I learned is if you're not willing to keep learning, you know, you're not going to ever improve. So, I mean, there's still time to have growth like that. My life, I'm 22 years old. Uh, I work a full-time job and have other things outside of YouTube. This is just a hobby of mine, but it just doesn't leave me with much time to be able to practice. And I wish I still had those days where I could, you know, sit down for two, three hours at a time and just solve the cube, YouTube playing in the background. I absolutely miss it, but um, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. There was a lot of growth at the beginning, maybe like the first month of cubing for me, um, and it was just astronomical. Next question coming in from Trish Versinger, I think, Ver, yeah, Versinga. Um, if you guys haven't noticed yet, I suck at names, so I, I apologize in advance. Um, Trish asks, who is your favorite cubing YouTuber and why? So this is kind of the question I was referring to earlier. I don't watch a lot of cubing YouTube at all. Um, I definitely do not watch any cubing shorts um, besides my own when I'm making them, you know, but maybe like one time a month, I'll watch a cubing video on YouTube. Um, it's just not something that I'm that interested in, you know, taking my time to sit and watch and it's not that they have bad videos it's just i don't watch television i don't watch youtube um quite a lot at all anymore so i just don't really have the time to but i definitely respect the hustle of a lot of the cubing youtubers out of there a lot of those guys are putting a lot more time and effort into their videos um than me and again i wish i had more time to put into my videos um so forgive me for you know sometimes they're pretty low quality but you know, I have a high respect for the guys who are out there doing that every day, all day. It's pretty amazing. Um, and then one final question here from MKU Cubing and Gaming 105. What cube do you use? So I think a lot of you guys know I use the Wave Rider V1 Flagship Edition. I bought the cube with pretty low expectations. I think I was one of the first people in the United States to receive it. Um, and it just kind of like fit my turning style perfectly. And that's never really happened to me with any cube ever. Um, I think it's like, I usually get a lot of locks and catches just because of my really rough turning style. Um, but it just doesn't happen as much with the Wave Rider and I'm all for it. Now, what you see me solving in this video today is the RS3M V5. I thought I'd switch it up a little bit and um, do something a little bit different. And part of it is the cube's a little bit smaller than the Wave Rider. And as you see me mixing the cube up here, I'm gonna be doing a one-handed solve. It's like the challenge of the day. And I really wanted to see how I did with a smaller cube. So I just did the whole video with the RS3M V5. I didn't end up breaking my PB um, yet, but as you see, I've been using the table a lot, like in my one-handed solves to um, turn the cube or to realign the cube. I know you can do that in competition, but I'd rather figure out a way to do finger tricks while holding the cube with one hand. Um, so I'm gonna be slowly working on that in my one-handed solves, but hopefully, hopefully next week, we will break our record with one-handed solving. I'm all into this now. You guys have convinced me that this is the way. And so, you know, we're gonna keep doing some one-handed solving at the end of these videos. But with that being said, appreciate y'all for watching. Comment cat if you made it to the end of the video and we'll see you 
in the next one. Peace. Oh. <laughs>